that um, next week, September 22nd, we will have a follow-up to this town hall with um, Transportation and Public Works Committee Roundtable. That's at the uh, Laguna Senior Apartments, September 22nd, 7 p.m., if you'd like to talk a little bit more about this in a roundtable type setting. And all of that information can be found on the Silver Lake Neighborhood website. Yeah. Where, what, all of the details. Uh, okay, so we understand the ground rules for Q&A. Then once we're done with Q&A, we have ground rules for comments. Depending, we got a load of questions, so I'd like to sp maybe cut the time for comments to one minute as opposed to two minutes per person. So if you can kind of rush, we'll be a little, not too strict, but if you can get that out in a minute, a minute 15, then that would be great. Because my goal also, and our goal, is to have every comment shared. Now, comment does not mean debate. Comment does not mean response. Comment means comment. The panel will receive that comment and uh, be satisfied that you've been heard and they've listened. Because this is all about hearing and listening and factual information. So, um, board member Heather Carson.
Carson will be our official time lady, and she's really mean. So <laughs> believe me, I know. So when she tells you your time is up, your time is up, and you will stop speaking. Uh, Jeff Wayne and Larry Lacombe, where are you? Jeff Wayne and Larry, those are our sergeant at arms. Uh, we have real sergeants. But those are the gentlemen who will make sure this re meeting runs the way Linda wants it to run. Respect and dignity, because that's what it's all about. But if I see that you're getting out of hand in any way... <laughs> okay, uh, without further ado, first question. So I also want to um, maybe apologize before... Oh, 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 sorry, 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 no, 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 sorry. We are now going to meet our panel. Oh, okay. So in an effort to consolidate the questions oh, yes, and things, yes. just so you all know, um, you know, there are a lot of redundancies in the questions, and we're going to work really hard to get those things answered. But if you notice that your question wasn't read exactly the way that it was asked, we just ask for that consideration and understanding that we're consolidating multiple questions with a similar Excellent. idea. Thank you. I forgot. So now we will start. Our panel will introduce themselves, and please take uh, not the full two minutes to introduce yourselves. Uh, starting with me, okay. Hi, Jerome Corshawn. Many of you know me. Uh, you're either on my list of neighbors or, or I'm on one of the lists of neighbors. Uh, I am... Can you stand up? Oh, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Um, so, Jerome Corshawn, what I'd like to see have happen, I'm, I'm just a neighbor. Uh, I do serve on the Land Use Committee of the Silver Lake Neighborhood Council, and I do a bunch of volunteer work, but I'm just a neighbor here. I'm not an organization. But I do speak with and for a lot of people who can't be here tonight, and some of you are here, so you'll speak for yourself, um, about the problems of the road diet, basically. What are the problems? We kind of know what many of them are. Can we resolve them? Can we fix them somehow? Captain Art Sandoval, uh, Northeast Area Captain, um, and I have uh, Captain Ann Young here from uh, Central Traffic Division, along with her staff and my senior lead officer of the area, Lenny Davis, back there in the back. Trying to hide. <laughs> I, I, I move on, Kajaj. I'm an engineer with Los Angeles Department of Transportation. Um, I'm here to kind of listen to any non-road diet concerns, and my colleague will be addressing some of the road diet concerns. Um, I'm, I work uh, pretty exclusively with Council District 4, so um, peripheral non-road diet issues, I'm, I'm here. But, and Marie said probably not going to hear too much of that tonight, but my contact information will be available. Uh, my name is Tim Framo. I'm also with the LA Department of Transportation. Um, for many years, I worked in our bikeways group, and I worked on many projects similar to Rowena, including Rowena itself. Um, a couple of years ago, or a year and a half ago, I moved to our Hollywood Lusher office, and I represent Council District 13, similar role as Bouvan there. But uh, due to my involvement with this project, and there, as, as it uh, was implemented, I'm here to answer specific questions about the project's implementation and any follow-up issues, I'm here to address those with Move On as well. Hi, I'm Sarah Dussault. I'm Council Member Roo's Chief of Staff. He's so sorry that he couldn't be here tonight. We had a prior scheduled uh, community meeting in Hancock Park about local infrastructure issues, not too different from this, this evening. So we divvied it up and I took this one and he took the other. Um, I just wanna introduce some of our staff who are here. Uh, Catherine, Catherine Landers, who many of you have met, she's the senior field deputy for the area. Alex Kim, who's here, and he's a senior advisor to the council member. We also brought Estevan Montemayor, he's our director of communications. We have Julia Duncan, she is our, one of our, our planning deputy. And we have Justin Ornstein, he is our legislative deputy. As you can see, we want to hear from you. We brought an enormous number of staff tonight. Um, so there are a lot of questions that are going to be posed where this two minute time frame or format are not going to be able to be addressed. So we're all going to stick around a little bit afterwards. We've got plenty of business cards. We'd love to talk to you about some of your concerns uh, and get to those. I do want to say specifically on the concerns on Rowena. I personally and the council member has received an enormous number of emails from people who couldn't make it tonight whether they were observing the holiday or had another engagement. And all of those concerns really come down to safety, both for the road and for the community. And they come down to the issue of pro and con. I would say if I counted them, they're probably 50-50 on some of the, of the issues. And people feel really strongly on each side. 
So we're really here to try and find the consensus points and to, to build uh, within this community to create solutions. And we want to hear from all of you. If that doesn't happen tonight, I, we're available to you either on email, cell, whatever it is. So I'm looking forward to the discussion. I'm Captain uh, Jeff Schamberg. I'm one of the three captains that serve Fire Station 56 in the Silver Lake area. Uh, today I'm here with my crew, uh, uh, Engineer Davis, uh, Paramedic Martin Guerrero, and Firefighter uh, Benny Williams. And we're here to uh, answer any questions that you may have. Good evening, my name is Jim O'Sullivan. <clears throat> I feel like a bump on the law because I'm not from the area. Um, but several people from the community contacted me. Um, President of the Miracle Mile Residential Association. We had a road diet. We had a similar accident in the Miracle Mile. A woman was killed. And Tom tried to put in a road diet. The DOT said, no, you can't. You have to do an EIR. So I sort of really kind of got involved with road diets. Uh, people emailed me and asked me about this. And I'm really here just to hear as much as you do because I gotta be honest with you, all the research I've done, I don't see how this was put in. It doesn't comply yeah. with AB 2245. I don't see a notice of exemption from CEQA. I don't see a plan, I don't see safety. I think Tom just decided to do it. And so quite frankly, to me it's illegal. Um, but I'm gonna let I'm here, by illegal I mean it doesn't comply with California state law. And it should, and you can go through that process and do it. But everybody deserves to be able to have the safety and traffic study that would be required. Thank you. Uh, my name's Josh Cohen. I'm a local. I live uh, in Franklin Hills. And I represent injured cyclists. I'm a former environmental attorney. And now I have a niche practice uh, in personal injury. I ride my bike. I drive my car, I have a wife, I have a four-year-old little girl, and uh, I'm here in my capacity as a local, but also on behalf of the LA County Bicycle Coalition, and uh, I don't want to say we believe everything the opposite of what Mr. O'Sullivan just said, but pretty much. Uh, so, I mean, I think, I think to... I, I think it's a pretty cynical gesture to invoke environmental impact reports as some means of opposing uh, a road diet. I think, I think it strains credulity and, and it's astonishing to me and it defies all the policy that underlies CEQA. But that said, uh, there will be comments and questions and we can go there later. My name is Don Ward. I'm a uh, born and raised Los Angeles citizen resident. I live in Los Feliz. I'm uh, representing the group Vision Hyperion. We are um, looking to change the dynamic in Los Angeles. So far for the last five or six decades we've been building car infrastructure, more car infrastructure, more car infrastructure. If you look at photos from the past, the condition is the same. There's traffic jams at peak hour times. So my goal is for the next 50 years to build a Los Angeles that's going to give more people more options to choose other than just a car to get around safely and conveniently. And I think with that kind of vision, we can have a better Los Angeles. When I look at Rowena, I see a Larchmont village. I see businesses on both sides of the street. I see a school. I see apartment buildings. And I see people crossing back and forth. I spent some time walking up and down the street, crossing back and forth. Traffic was not that bad. It's peak hour time. Maybe we should all go outside and have a walk and enjoy some of these businesses. That's the vision that we want to do. Good evening. My name's Jeff Jacoberger. I'm the chair of the City of Los Angeles' Bicycle Advisory Committee, um, which is made up of appointees um, from the mayor and each of the council offices. I am the appointee of Council President Herb Wesson, although I actually live in the 4th District due to redistricting. Um, Welcome. Let's see. So, <laughs> uh, and, you know, one of the real the mission of the Bicycle Advisory Committee is to ensure safe streets for everyone. As some of you may know, 
the city just adopted a vision zero policy. In the city of LA, there's about 200 people die in traffic collisions every year. Um, nearly half of those are pedestrians and bicyclists. And so I think my goal here tonight is try to find a solution where we can have a Rowena that's safe for everyone, a Waverly that's safe for everyone, and is it Argus, Angus? Angus, Angus. Angus. sorry. <laughs> that's safe for everyone. Uh, but that you, we shouldn't be picking winners and losers. We should make, be making all of our streets safe for everyone in the city of Los Angeles. So, just, just, just realize, the longer we applaud, that takes time. So let's not do that. So uh, we'll all just assume that everyone's appreciated. <laughs> so first question. So um, why don't we start with the uh, intention of the Ruina Road Diet? And so uh, there are a couple questions that are interested in one, the intention, uh, possibly the fact that it is to slow traffic. And if that's the case, or if there are other intentions, what are other possible solutions um, that we could utilize? So I'm assuming DOT. Sure. Um, Going back to when this project was first conceived, I think the initial uh, incident of the pedestrian being killed was sort of spawned the discussion. Um, and we looked, and DOT was approached as far as what solutions could be undertaken in order to, to make the street overall safer. Impartial response to that particular incident um, at the time. And so the bicycle plan at the time was a tool, in effect, a means to look at certain corridors that were already identified in the bike plan for bicycle lanes. And so there was a, the thought, well, if, if we implemented a, a road diet, as we call it, on Rowena, where we install bicycle lanes, the bicycle lanes are really just an after effect of reconfiguring the roadway. So the goal ultimately was a safer street. Um, that includes speeds. That includes the left turn channelization. So having that left turn pocket um, is, is one of the proven measures of safety in terms of reducing conflicts with left turning vehicles. Um, and a safer crossing in terms of not necessarily having to have the marked crosswalk, but crossing fewer lanes of traffic and having that refuge in the center. So I think just in general, it was a safety improvement. And you can see a lot of different aspects of safety that are addressed by the implementation of what is known as a road diet. Anyone else on the panel for a quick 30 seconds? Seeing none, great. Next question, Rusty. Okay, there's a number of questions here that deal with the cut through traffic that has been generated into some of the side streets. So, um, to broaden this out, what is the city doing about addressing those issues? And also, given the consideration of uh, um, mitigating measures that the city may take, you know, whether it's speed bumps or more stop signs in the area, to somewhat discourage traffic. And then, also, also um, um, Instead of dismantling the road diet, can we discourage cars from using the Well, why don't we start with the first so question? We'll go, I just tried to get it a bunch yeah. of these all in together. Okay, so, so mitigation for cut through. Um, one of the, one of the uh, main uh, op, uh, alternatives to the road diet or where people are using for cut through has been Waverly. And um, that, that was the, the perception. And DOT looked at the, the corridor along Waverly and um, uh, about eight or nine months ago, a stop sign was installed at um, Avenel and at Herkimer to sort of curb some of the speeding on Waverly. Um, last year, we also met with some of the local residents on Rockaby and Waverly, and we met with LAPD and a representative from the council office, and uh, that's where I met the showman right here, and um, we had LAPD representatives there, and they enacted some uh, increased enforcement over there, and. We looked at some of the patterns and the compliance issues, and uh, in terms of what we have in our toolbox for speed humps, at this point it is a program that has been uh, temporarily put on hold uh, from the city. Uh, they're working with our department, from what we understand, they're working towards re re uh, restoring this program, and hopefully within a year or so, that will be a tool available uh, to us again. But at that point, we can reassess the uh, the speeds and so forth on Waverly. Uh, we did do a speed study, uh, what was it, from June of 2014. So this was last year. And we saw this, the 85th percentile speeds on Waverly uh, in between Herkimer and Avenal at that point. This was prior to the installation of those stop signs. And there was an unimpeded distance of around 1,300 feet. And we saw the 85th percentile speeds. Uh, one direction was 25 miles an hour, the other direction was 29 miles an hour neither of which indicate a speeding problem on Waverly. 
we don't see more than five miles above the speed limit, uh, it's not indicative of a speed problem for a Department of Transportation. But I, would, I want to add to that, there are still a few tools in the toolbox we can consider. One of those is turn restrictions during certain hours. That's something we do need to get community consensus on. They can't be controversial as they affect everybody. Um, we're also looking at some of the existing stop controlled intersections to possibly enhance them with additional markings, additional signs. So there are quite a few tools I think we can still look at to make improvements. With the remaining 50 seconds, anyone else? I'd like to mention that I've seen on 8th Street uh, in Hancock Park that there were concrete islands built to also restrict. And it seems like when I talk to Jerome that uh, drivers disrespect the painted um, left and right turn restrictions, but is it possible to put in curb uh, concrete uh, barricades that would um, not be possible to pass, similar to what they do in Hancock Park? Can you answer that in 20 seconds? It, it is possible there's a process. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Next question. Is there, <laughs> there are a lot of comments and questions uh, in regard to safety and, and of course car accidents and, and, and things and some of them um, are directed uh, to the LAPD and the LA Fire Department. Um, so both the general question of how are the numbers of accidents um, in collisions and also the severity of collisions uh, has been affected um, since the road diet has been implemented and also how has it affected your operational abilities. Um, so two separate things but um, kind of directed in the same group. Uh, LAPD, you want to handle that first, and then we'll go to LAFD. Officer Boca, Central Traffic, uh, year to date. Could you stand up, please? Sure. Great. Year to date, hold on, I got it. We have 11 TCs in this stretch. Could you explain what that means? Louder. If you could turn to the audience so they can hear you. Year to date, we have. Uh, uh, 11 TCs on Rowena, the road guide area. We're not, we're, we're civilians. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to the road diet in 2012, we had 20 TCs, traffic collisions in that same stretch. 2013, we had 19. 2014, we had 15. So we're kind of on the same pace. Um, thank you, LAFD. And if everyone could use their actor voices so people can be heard in the back. It's pretty simple for the fire department. Um, I've only been here since May, so I don't have the statistics that LAPD does as mm -hmm. far as traffic accidents. Since I've been here since May, we've had no traffic collisions on Rowena. Um, our biggest problem is traffic that backs up during the uh, traffic periods. Fortunately, that's not a busy time for us. Usually, we're going out after midnight when the street is open. Thank you. Next, uh, any other comments? Was no, that, it was directed. Yeah, there was a, we a question was, third. It was about uh, how it affected your uh, operations. And so, he did. You, you he answered that. Yeah, asked and answered. answered. I think no, when you, you were referring to response time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Rusty, next question. Okay, does the increased traffic due to the soon-to-be-open Whole Foods considered during this design of the <laughs> Rowena Avenue road diet? Uh, CD4, Whole Foods? So, we're the new CD4, so <laughs> I can't really comment on what the old CD4 did. Uh, I think that would be a question for DOT when they did the design. I'm not too familiar. I know the, I know the plants for the, it's like a smaller footprint Whole Foods, I guess. I don't, there was no talk of that at the time of this project, and I'm not familiar with what studies were done. Typically, large projects have large traffic mitigation pro, uh, packages associated with them. We have a DOT planning office that we can check back in and get all that information for you, but I don't have it offhand. All right, it next sounds group. like we should research it and yeah. get back. Definitely. Um, yes? Isn't that Whole Foods just replacing a Ralph's? Yes. yes. So I guess, I mean, the question I'd have for, is there a particular reason to think that Whole Foods. Yes. Well, that's yes. Actually, there's a I mean, clarif there is, it's a but clarification. It's going to be a 365, and the report was made to the board that they've requested a, a, a wine tasting cafe. So that's something that Ralph's did not have. So, uh, next question. <laughs> there's a series of questions um, and concerns from both parents, and, and I wanted to comment on an 11 year old's um, question. Um, 
so it's about safe passage for kids and, and um, to Ivanhoe, which is right here and across the Rowena Road Diet. And so I'm not sure who would like to take it, but the question is, how does the Rowena Road Diet affect safe passage for kids, and, and how could you improve that? I'll take a stab at it to start, I guess. The, uh, I kind of mentioned earlier, but in for the vehicle code, you can cross a, a street at an intersection, even if there's no marked crosswalk. So let's say Rowena and Herkimer, or any of those streets, even though there's no signal there, it is a legal crossing. Prior to the road diet, it would be a, diff, a more difficult crossing. You had to cross four lanes of traffic with no refuge in the center. So the advantage now is you only cross one lane in each direction. Traffic is typically slower, and you have the center refuge uh, area. Um, for an, a marked crosswalk, we have to meet certain warrants, which are based on federal requirements. Um, and when we get a request, we evaluate it. Um, if, since this is in Bouvan's area, he would look at it. Um, and we don't have the, the sort of the latitude, like with a road diet, where it's a, uh, over a process and evaluation, and we can decide where we kind of want to do it based on the bicycle plan and the mobility element. Crosswalk is very strict, so they, we can always look at them, but they have to meet a certain uh, set of uh, requirements to, to, to add that enhancement on top of what's already out there. Can I, can I just add something? And then, to, yeah, sure, definitely. Um, Tim mentioned that it's legal to cross in an unmarked crosswalk. I'll also add drivers are required to yield at that unmarked crosswalk when somebody stepped <laughs> off the curb. And my experience is right. most drivers don't, really. Um, and this question was specifically about kids. And so the road diet has a particular benefit for kids because if a car is stopped and a short, small child is starting to cross the street, that the other drivers in the other lane can't see and they go flying by because they think the car is stopped waiting to park or to make a turn or something. And kids are kids, right? They're not as attentive as they should be. Um, the two lanes in each direction with no center lane <coughs> is part a particularly hazardous road configuration for children. Uh, yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, I'll, I'll actually agree with much of what you said. Um, the, the issue, for, for those of you who live in the neighborhood and you will cross even at, you know, where two streets intersect and it's a legal crosswalk even though it's not marked. With the road diet, it's almost impossible for me to do so safely because of the way the lights are timed. And I don't know that you can change the timing so that it would work. When there was no road diet, you actually had spaces, you had gaps where the cars would stop because they were held back by the lights and you could easily cross four lanes of traffic. Now, because there's always a line of cars, especially during peak hours, but even sometimes off peak hours, you can't, you know, I am not someone, and I don't think, you know, who's gonna go out there and seek, to seek refuge in the center lane, hoping no one's gonna like, you know, come up and wanna make a left turn and not see me. So I think it's a little, with respect to DOT, I think it's a little, it's quite dangerous to really wanna cross the street when you have an unending line of cars hoping they'll stop. Yes, many drivers don't stop. That's the problem. I don't know what the percentage is, but uh, my, my uneducated Time. guess is 70% of the drivers don't know they're supposed to stop. Time and the professionals here, LAPD, 30 seconds. Please clarify what it is. Crosswalk, no crosswalk. Captain? Oh, Captain Young. There's a lot of captains. <laughs> Unmarked crosswalk at any intersection. We as drivers shall stop for pedestrians period, in a sentence. Um, and a marked crosswalk is, we all know what a marked crosswalk, but an unmarked crosswalk right here out on the street here, crossing uh, Rowena. At the prolongation of the, the turn, you take that curb line straight across the street, that's where you cross the street. And you have to obviously not step out in front of cars, but we, uh, every other Wednesday, we do a pedestrian uh, task force just for this reason. People don't stop for pedestrians. And it's, I mean, I learned that when I was 16, taking the test. You, the driver, shall stop for a pedestrian. So just know that. Don't don't cross in the middle of the block. Cross at the intersection. Even, even if it's not marked, you can legally cross there. Thank you. Next question. OK, what is the acceptable level of injuries and fatalities per minute? <laughs> Zero. You might think that's okay. okay. Um, We've got the answer. I'll be real simple. I'm, I'm Mike Caden. I'm a detective for Central Traffic Division. I've been there for 
gosh, almost 19 years now. The only thing we look at is one thing. We can't afford lives lost. One life lost is an unbelievable tragedy to their family, more or less their friends. I don't know if anybody here has been in contact with anybody or any family members that's been involved in these. It destroys your family. Whether you were right or whether you were totally wrong in this traffic accident that caused your death, it makes no difference. So I'm back to zero. That's what we'd like. Our biggest problem is here is I don't see, ever see that happen. Uh, we have too many as it is. Uh, I wish I could give you an answer to how we're going to solve it. I don't know the way because there's always going to be people that are involved in traffic collisions. That's why they call them accidents. We don't intentionally go out there and try to do them. So, I wish we could make it a zero, but I don't ever see it's going to occur. Thank you. Next question. Uh, so this question is, um, a series of questions about pedestrians and safety, again, but more specific to what can be done. So the idea of adding crosswalk signaling or the striped crosswalks, and so you kind of answered what's legally required and what one could or couldn't do, but maybe what could be added to make it more safe. Um, you know, going back to what Tim said, uh, you know, our uh, our studies, our traffic engineering studies for marked crosswalks and for uh, activated pedestrian warning devices, those are those um, where you have an overhead flashing beacon over a crosswalk. Um, it's, it's a very strict study, a very strict guideline that requires several different, you know, warrants to be met, minimum criteria. So uh, it, it's not, you know, we can't just install them willy-nilly. It, it has to be justified by a proper engineering study. There's a particular location on the, on the stretch, you know, that, that we get a request for. We will look at it to, to study for implementation of an additional traffic control device. Um, you know, that, that being said, there's pros and cons to marking a crosswalk. Um, yeah, you know, there's some, some studies have shown that infrequently used crosswalks have uh, higher accidents, uh, a higher number of collisions there because drivers aren't expecting pedestrians there, or you get pedestrians that have a false sense of security, they enter a marked crosswalk. I mean, at the end of the day, as LAPD can attest to, uh, people aren't stopping for crosswalks. Unfortunately, you have a pedestrian who gets out there and you know they're in painted lines and they feel they're in some sort of you know bubble or you know some sort of uh, really safe infrastructure, and um, it's just paint. And at the end of the day, if people aren't stopping for them, uh, you know. We don't want to think of, of the worst case scenario. Going back to the road diet where you only have to cross a single lane, uh, what that gentleman at the end said, uh, it, it's a huge benefit to only have to cross one active lane of traffic. Because when, when you're at the crosswalk and you're looking down, you're only paying attention to one lane of traffic. If that first car stops, if you have a two lane road, as soon as you're crossing that first vehicle, someone behind that first car oftentimes you know, spin, you know, goes around and I mean, people have driven down Hollywood Boulevard around Thai Town, and uh, it's two lanes in each direction, and there's no left turn channelization, and people just play leapfrog because there's people turning left into intersections or pedestrians and so forth. Time. Thank you. Next question. Sorry. Uh, when were the residents of the Rowena area informed about the road diet, and was there any outreach done? Oh, CD4 and uh, Jerome. Oh. I think CD4 was not here. I think you're only going to be able to use that on a new excuse for a little while longer. This one is pretty factual in nature. Okay. So it, you, I would like to comment after you. Okay. Excellent. Sure. Uh, there were two community meetings held. One was before the implementation. One was just following it, I think six months after, at the request of the old CD4. Um, and I believe one of the meetings was held in the school, and one was at the church on Hyperion. Um, and I don't, I can't really speak to the type of outreach as far as flyering or how the notification went out, but we had a pretty good turnout at both meetings, maybe not quite, I feel one, like one of the meetings was like maybe this level almost, and one of them was a lot less, but uh, that was kind of the outreach as far as I'm aware, and the old CD4 unfortunately is not here to comment, but I think they did more of the outreach itself, and we were there to support more than anything. CD4? Sue, so, I, I think what's fabulous about Council Member Rue is he comes from the community and really loves this kind of a community engagement. So I, you will be seeing a lot more of it in the future from this office. And I know that he wants to make his decisions based on data and based on the experiential data of all of you. 
So when you're talking about how this is going to get solved, what, what can make the street safer, some of you experience it every day and might have a really good idea that these fine gentlemen, I am positive, would entertain. So we need to come up with a way that there's more active engagement in those kinds of ideas. I, I can't comment on the how this went you know, down in terms of the recent community engagement for this project. I think it's been implemented for over two years now. Two and a half. So two and a half years. So it even predates really the campaign itself. Um, but I can say that we are looking to do active engagement to come to solutions because clearly there are strong feelings on either side of this issue. And we'd like to see if we can find uh, solutions to address both the safety issues that have been identified by folks, the cut through tra traffic issues, and ways to just improve neighborhood traffic flow in general here. Jerome, one minute. Um, so this is great, and I, and I really appreciate um, David, David's willingness to really listen to the community, and I get that. And so that's what I think a lot of us are looking forward to. Um, on this issue and on all the issues in Silver Lake that, that bring out this many folks. Um, in terms of the outreach, uh, the very first meeting, I'll be, I only have a minute, the very first meeting about this was, was, at, was tagged on to a DWP quarterly meeting. It was here in this very room on February 28, 2013. Uh, there were, in this room were about 20 people total, maybe 18. Four business owners, including the owner of Shag, Nikki D's, um, Clover, and another business. And Tom was here with Carolyn Ramsey. I, I won't get into the particulars. I shouldn't. Um, and it was basically, I know that I don't mean to be sound volatile. It was kind of snuck in. They had done, hadn't done any outreach to the community about it. Tom and DOT was here. They said we're going to try this for three months, and we'll and we'll have a review meeting. I made Tom promise that he would come back in three months and do that actual review meeting. Time. I'm sure there'll be another question, sure. and you can continue. <laughs> next question. <laughs> so the next set of questions um, cycles around cyclists, and so first, how has um, cyclists in number and safety been affected um, since the Reno Road Diet? I'm uh, added cyclists. All right. I don't know if you guys want to talk about your experiences, or I can just. Or you want to? Yeah. 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 Numbers and some experiences oh. and, and things. And so. Okay, um, <laughs> okay, well, just, just real quick on the crashes, we, had, we, we did some sampling from a, a couple of years before and then a year after. Um, there were three bicyclist related collisions in 08. In 2010, there was one, and in 13, there were none. Not to say that there weren't others outside of these periods, but we, we did see a decrease in cyclist related collisions um, after the fact. So that's just an, uh, some data right there for the, the Je uh, Jeff or. or I mean, I'll just sort of say my experience as a cyclist okay. is um, a few weeks ago, I was ride biking up Glendale Boulevard when the construction was going on and it was down to one lane in each direction. If I'd known it was one lane, I probably wouldn't have ridden on that street. I had cars honking at me, people yelling out their windows at me. When I ride in a bike lane, whether it's on Rowena or any place else, I do not have people yelling at me. I do not have people spitting at me. I do not have people yelling and calling me a faggot. So I like bike lanes. Yeah. On cyclists, oh. you know that the number of cyclists that uh, that were before and 53 number that are now. We had we didn't because the when the project was implemented we had done a, a before uh, the comprehensive before study so we had to pull anecdotal anecdotal but a small sampling of data from well before the road died and it showed no cyclists and I'm pretty sure that's because they didn't count any cyclists but I think the numbers were you know we can estimate what they were at that time after the road died we had 90 cyclists in a six hour period. So you, know, you can extrapolate that essentially. It's an average number. It doesn't the lanes don't kind of connect anything? Really, just to, 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 I want to mention they were not the, the main piece of the project. It was a, they were they were icing on the cake essentially. The main drive of the project was the, the speed reduction and lane reduction. The, the, the lanes were uh, byproduct of having additional space. Uh, next question, yeah. Rusty. When the bicycle lane or bike, bicycle uh, yeah, lane was being considered, was there any consideration for all the infill development along Rowena, what's the condo projects and, and um, things of this nature? DOT? Not, not explicitly, I'm not sure what we would have done differently had we 
coordinated a development project? Uh, uh, one Don and then. So the advantage of the road diet that's going to uh, it's forthcoming is there are more apartment buildings being built along Rowena, and there are several driveways along Rowena. And what you have now is a center turn lane where people can turn left um, safely, because as we know as drivers, the left lane is considered to be the fast lane, and. That makes it a high collision uh, situation when you have a four lane and you have somebody stopping to make a left into a driveway. When somebody stops in that left turn lane, you've now disrupted what people normally think is the fast lane. And they swerve out of the way and go in the right, and that causes collisions. And it's also difficult to gauge speed when you have two lanes of traffic coming at you as you're trying to make that left turn lane. So that's one of the advantages of the program. Uh, no. Next question. <laughs> You so, fill out an index card and bring it up. Next question. So you alluded to the fact that the bike lanes uh, only go halfway, and so what was the consideration for that? Um, why was that implemented that way, and is there a way, is there a safer way to affect that? They don't, they don't go halfway, but it's just it's a, it's a short corridor. Yeah. So to go beyond that, we would have to look at a similar project on either Hyperion or Glendale Boulevard, which can be looked at in the future. Hey, can I just jump in and add one thing? I mean, the question makes the assumption that this was a bike lane project, and I think as Tim stated at the beginning, this was a safety project that was about a road diet. And when you took the lane away, you had an extra 10 feet, so they put in bike lanes. I mean, it was a, it is a road safety project. It's not really a bike, that happens to have bike lanes. It's not a primarily a bike lane project, because as Tim noted, it doesn't right now connect to other bike lanes. Next question. Okay, was there any feasibility work done uh, in relation to the increased air pollution from idling cars, spillover traffic, impacts the fire station on um, congested streets? Uh, DOT, and I get, oh no, not CD4 since you weren't there. <laughs> so DOT, why don't you take a stab at that? Okay, I'll try. And um, then maybe James or <coughs> down the line. <laughs> so as far as, as far as the environmental requirements, I'll just kind of touch on those. Um, we've implemented 50 or so road dumps in the city that did not require any sort of environmental exemption or report. So prior to AB 2245, which is an assembly bill enacted a, a few years ago, um, any implementation, restriping of a way for bike lanes that reduced capacity at what we call a significant impact based on the city's uh, traffic study guidelines, which developers use to determine if they have impacts when they're building a condo tower or something like that, those would have required an EIR prior to the assembly bill. After the assembly bill 2245, those same projects are exempt, but they do require a traffic study, which is basically an analysis of capacity um, it does, it's not the full, the full blown EIR, but it's kind of the traffic element of an EIR. Um, so Rowena was one of 50 or so projects that didn't even require that because we did do a traffic analysis and did not find significant impact in terms of the amount of delay added to the corridor. That's based again on our city's traffic study guidelines, which is the same requirements that developers <coughs> undergo when they're building projects. James or Joshua? Yeah, or drill, but I, you know, you guys have been kind of quiet, so I kind of hold on. Anything I, I, while our time? Forty seconds. I find that I find that incredulous that fifty were put in without any kind of a study. Long as we're clear, he says. But he did. He said fifty were put in without and didn't have to deal with AB twenty two forty five. That's correct. AB two twenty forty five requires a traffic study, a safety study. And, and I don't believe that that is the case. I can go back and look through it and check it all, and I'm going to be doing a public records request act for everything that you're saying here tonight. Because that's madness that you can do this. You throw it in, and then you do a little bit afterwards. It should have been done before, should have dealt with the cut-through traffic, should have dealt with LAFD, should have dealt with everything, and then everybody would have signed on and said, So, 30 seconds on the clock. So it sounds like what, what LADOT is saying is that the more lane capacity, the, the more density can be built into the city because that's what developers are you know, looking for, right? They're looking for more lane capacity to build more density. Okay, next question. What is the plan to address commute traffic? I'm sorry, isn't it Fran? 
Fran, you're it. <laughs> there um, are a handful of questions and concerns about turning left um, off of Helena onto Glendale. Um, so there's a direct question about whether you can reset the timing of that to make it safer, easier, better, or are there other solutions to make it safer, easier, or better? EFT. Um, someone said eastbound and someone said north, so you know, maybe DOT will just answer. We did, we did modify that of the operation of that signal. Now there are protected turns, so the east, if you want to call it eastbound Rowena, left turn on the Glendale is now protected turn, and the westbound right turn is now protected turn, which eliminates the pedestrian conflict. So that was done in conjunction with the project as uh, sort of a package deal. Officer Boca, any comment on that signal since you patrol that area? No comment. Got it. Thank you. Any other officer who controls the area? None. Moving on. Next question. Okay. Uh, another question on commuter cut through traffic at Angus and Waverly. Is there any plan to address this at all? Uh, 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 Jerome, DOT, and uh, uh, Jeff. You know, I actually, uh, and it's really kind of a question, so I'll be quick because because you maybe can address this. Your traffic analysis that you did. Uh, about the road diet seemed only to focus on the speed of the street and the issue on that street. It didn't seem to take into account the cut through traffic problem with thousands of cars now flooding to Waverly and Angus and Armstrong yeah. and Kenilworth and Kenilworth and Auburn and Herkimer and Avenel and every street yeah. that's affected yeah. by this. So I want to know what, what, you know, how can the DO, how can DOT do a study when they don't take into account one of the most severe impacts that's even talked about in the EIR of the mobility plan, which we won't talk about. Okay, um, DOT, and then the last 20 seconds to Joshua. DOT? I'll, I'll just say it, it's an aspect that we, we, we are not satisfied with the current condition. Um, our, what's required to be studied is different than what should have been studied, and I will concede that we should have looked at cut through closely. Uh, we have we have other street where we have looked at these projects where we have had similar problems. I would say they're in the minority, but they are there are projects like this one that have similar problems that we are still working to address. Stop signs was the first uh, level, and we've done the same thing on other corridors, but that's not enough. We, we're committed to continuing to work through these issues with you. Joshua. Anything? I can, I can speak on behalf of the LACBC that they actually support concerns about cut through traffic and that they are concerned about safe streets everywhere. So to the extent that there's any negative impact anywhere else in the neighborhood, the LACBC is also concerned. And as a local stakeholder and a dad and someone that likes walking his little girl around in this neighborhood, I am also concerned with that. Sarah? I was just going to add, as is the council member, so that's why we're here. So our entire plan is to address these effects. So we'll be working closely with the members who are here and in the audience to come to those solutions. Excellent. Next question. Um, there's a question about parking. How has parking been affected um, since the Marina Road Diet, and how would it be affected if it got removed? Hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have that agency <coughs> here. So who well, feels comfortable? Wait, wait. I can comment on that. Right, there were great. virtually no changes. I don't think there was any change to parking. Parking yeah. remains as it was before, and there would be no effect. How about enforcement? I think how we about, might have, yeah. How about parking enforcement? Uh, <laughs> any, anything from LAPD? That's LAPD. No, I know that. <laughs> Not my first rodeo. I just wanted to make sure that they. Nothing? Okay, great. Uh, asked and answered? Okay. Oh, yeah, you definitely done. Um, I would point out that the bike lane gives you a buffer zone between speeding traffic and your car when you park. Please don't open the door into our path. <laughs> but oh, come on. I parked on Rowena and I felt pretty comfortable getting out of my car and there's some four lane configurations where it's scary. So that makes it more conducive to business in the area in my opinion. Okay, next question. Uh, prior to the bike lane going in, did DOT or does DOT have any statistics on um, vehicle counts during commute hours and also over on to the side streets before and after the road drive? Yes, um, I'll read a little excerpt as far as Romeo <coughs> itself. Throughput has remained generally constant when comparing the road diet with the pre-road diet configuration. Maximum volume pre-road diet was 1,027 eastbound through vehicles. 909 westbound through vehicles. Is that per hour or what? That's for the peak hour. 
the maximum hour. Which days? What, what hours? Hour? Hour? What hours did, were those counted? Uh, I'd have to look back and see. It's usually in the AM, it's usually 7 to 8 or 8 to 9, and the PM is 5 to 6, typically. Um, so 127 and 909 in each direction. With the road diet, 868 and 983. So it decreased in one direction, increased a little bit in the other. It's a one-day sampling, so it varies, but we've taken quite a few and it stays, it hovers around that number. The ADT average daily traffic after the road diet is 22,000, um, and before it was similar. So we're, again, comparable. That doesn't mean there's not an increased delay. There is an increased delay for motor vehicles, but the throughput is essentially just about the same, the pre and post. The amount of cars getting through are about the same. Just real quick, um, I don't know if these are the same stats that I received, but uh, David Zonheiser of the LA Times, when he interviewed me, sent me some of the stats from DOT, and, and the stats of counting the traffic was 11 to 11.30 a.m. I don't know if that's the same that, as That these. was the speed survey. That was for speed, which we typically do midday, because that's when it's free flow. Okay, because there was volume on there, too. That, that might have been a misprint, but the speed was midday. Okay. okay. And we did, we did do counts on, the, on Waverly and the side streets. Um, I, I have quite a few I can go through, but we did see an increase. That's the ultimate result. So we, we do acknowledge that there is an issue with cut through traffic. What was the amount of bicycle traffic? On Rowena? Uh, we didn't have a count before the road diet, so we don't have anything to go on, but the after, as I mentioned earlier, 90 bikes in six hours. Which are, in one day. A six hour period in one day. Which are, which are not cars, by the way. So they're not taking up road space to cars, by the way. Okay, next question. So I want to acknowledge that you did answer that the bike lanes were implemented um, as, as a product of having extra space. This question um, asks about why put in bike lanes at all if all lanes are bike lanes. DOT. <laughs> uh, it depends who you talk to. I mean, there are folks that actually prefer to ride in traffic, but I think the you know, depending on who you talk to, the majority of people, especially those who are not uh, experienced, prefer to have a dedicated space. And it's a, I guess it's a, it's a benefit for all users typically because motor vehicles no longer have to share that space. So uh, not everyone feels that way, but I would say depending on who you know, depending on the ability of the person you talk to, most, most people I've talked to who are not super savvy riding in the street prefer a bike. And even those who are savvy prefer a bike. Yes? I would like to cede 30 seconds to that man. He's on the Caltrans. Oh. Of a uh, bicycle advisory committee, and he is a he is a road uh, well, he'll have an, believer. He'll have an opportunity in the comment section okay. for two minutes. <laughs> He's a other I mean, Next question. I, I would, can I just add one thing to that? Oh, is, sure. If you look at the statistics in the city of Los Angeles, um, about 25 percent of the people who ride their bikes are women, and 75 percent are men. Sort of in the bicycle planning world. That's generally, I mean, there are lots of reasons why women, biking doesn't always work as well for women. They have more childcare responsibilities, often have to do more of the grocery shopping, those sorts of things. Um, but that gender disparity is generally a sign um, that bicycling, where you have to share a lane, is not perceived as, as safe by most people, reflected in the lower numbers of women that we see bicycling on the streets. I'd like to add. Uh, mm. <laughs> Anybody, anybody remember the, okay, anybody remember the articles that came out after the after Carmageddon and the 405 was expanded, and and adding capacity to the 405 slowed travel time. So there's a concept called induced capacity, and it cuts both ways. So if you add car capacity, you attract more cars. If you add bike capacity, you attract Time. more bikes. Thank you. Next question. Adding bikes takes cars off the road. <laughs> what other options to make Rowena safer besides a road diet were considered, such as crosswalks, rumble strips, better lighting? I don't think it's an either or. I think those are still things that can be looked at. As, as was mentioned, crosswalks are difficult to approve and don't always make things safer. Um, rumble strips, I, we haven't really done too many of those. I don't know if we have any information on success of those. Or, uh, we would have to look into that. But all those things, I mean, can be looked at in addition. It's not a, it's not a one or the other. James? Well, maybe, can, maybe David will do it. Tom would have never approved a uh, crosswalk. He was in the crosswalk as a kid. I never understood that. Finally, I asked him one day. You know, he got hit in the crosswalk. So for him, crosswalks are never safe no matter what you did. Blinking lights up top, 
blink lights on the bottom. So, but maybe David can work with DOT and you can look at that because I don't understand why there aren't light crosswalks in these streets for safety. With a button you can push, it turns it off. Jeff, so. Oh, I don't need to add. I talked about it. Okay, John. <laughs> the reason that the LA DOT does not like signalized crosswalks is because they disrupt traffic in their mind. The LA DOT for the last 50 years has been a cars first organization, and crosswalks in their mind disrupt traffic. Signals disrupt traffic and they don't like it and they take them out and Tom LeBonge was on board with that 150 percent DOT respond 38 seconds. I don't share that opinion. I don't I mean I can't speak for my prior generation <laughs> <laughs> I mean the way I'm looking at strictly looking at data Personally, I, if, I, if I put in a crosswalk, I want it to be fully signalized. That means red light, yeah. solid red or flashing yeah. red. Yeah. I don't like the flashing yellow. I don't like the no lights. And evidence shows either mixed or negative reviews with those. So I don't necessarily want to endorse those unless we do a real traffic signal. That's my opinion. Does anybody really care what LADOT thinks? Yes. 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 <laughs> you are the community. If you think a crosswalk. Hey, stop it. No, if you think a, a, a crosswalk with a flashing light is what the community wants, then to, for LADOT to say, no, we just want to move cars there. We've been hearing that all of our lives here, and it's time for that to stop. Next question. This question is about um, removing the Rowena Road Diet, um, or actually if you could speak to the benefits of the Rowena Road Diet and how you would fix it. One uh, question? I'm, I'm not sure I follow. So yeah, the there are lots of comments about removing the Rowena Road Diet and how that would be effective, and I, I'm trying to consolidate the idea of, of what the benefits of the diet have been okay. and changes that you would make to make it better. Okay. So the benefits, I think we, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but I'll just summarize. Safety. So number of crashes, the LAPD alluded to it as well. We showed similar data, and there's a significant reduction in crashes involving cyclists, pedestrians, and motor vehicles. Uh, speed reduction. We had 85th percentile speeds for 39 in both directions back in 02. This is well before the road diet. Um, and then it went down to 36 and 35 east and west, west and east respectively after. That's a significant reduction. The speed limit is 35 off school hours. Um, volume is the same. Travel time is decreased, so that's a trade-off. You lose a little bit of uh, travel time in, in uh, exchange for some of those benefits. We talked about the left turns. It could be a little slower, but it could be a little more efficient for left turning vehicles. Um, and, there, and as I mentioned earlier, there's still tools in the toolbox to make the street better. Um, so, Jerome? Um, so I don't know, Don, do you want me to not talk about what we talked about the other night, or? Well. <laughs> you got a minute, you got a minute uh, second. There's no discussion here. No, it's to the audience, okay. not to the panel. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. Uh, so, you know, opposition and I got together. It was just between us. Obviously, it's not, you know, whatever happens is the community's decision with CD4, DOT, LAPD, and LAFD. Um, that said, we just threw out some ideas. Had a beer, uh, got along just fine. No arguments, no fighting. It was great. And had a map. Um, and we even had a, he even brought a map. And we came up with where two signalized crosswalks could go on Rowena that are red, okay? And we talked about the idea of maybe the road diet might go away, maybe not, but if it went away, how do we still slow the street down? Because the problem is, it's people still speed at nighttime. Last night from Michelangelo's, someone was going 50 miles an hour down the road right in front of Antonio and me as we were standing at Michelangelo's. So how do you slow it down? Whether we use bots dots, or rumble strips or something, but there's, it has, we still have the problem with speeders outside of the peak hours. Time. Last question, uh, last two questions. Okay, why the decision against retail space at the old coffee table uh, that goes against urban planning and road? Nope. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question. Given that the last five decades have been about building car infrastructure, yet traffic is still a problem, what is the fix of the city's plan for the next five decades? Uh, you know what? That's really involving the mobility plan 2035. We're going to have a completely other meeting for that, hopefully. So let's move on to comments. I'm so relieved that we got through.
So, so Rusty and uh, Francis will help me. We're going to do it by section and section. We're going back and forth. So, do not argue with me when I've indicated you, and do not relinquish your time to anybody else. Ma'am, first statement, and there is no debate. It's only a statement. Mary, um, on my uh, part, I said there needs to be a deal to the green, deal on green at the eastbound turn, left turn lane, on the Glendale Boulevard. I have sat there with no cars coming. Had it been green, I could have gone. Secondly, there needs to be, uh, I wanted to echo that it's safer for parked cars, people to get in and out of their cars. I'm absolutely positive about that, having had a friend's door ripped off. And I'm four way. Just watch for bike. Secondly, just like razor wire gives cut through commuters one impression of a neighborhood, meaning this is a very unsafe place, bike lanes and neighborhoods give through commuters an impression that it's a residential neighborhood, not a freeway. And then we'll just keep going. Remember, I pointed to you. So I just wanted to throw out a first-hand experience where uh, the road diet has made it un more unsafe. Uh, I was in the left turn lane, waiting to turn into the establishment to get my hair cut. And uh, because you do have this long line of cars with no movement, finally a truck stopped and let me in. And as I was turning, I got hit by a motorcycle because he was so frustrated by the fact that he saw a green light up ahead and there was no movement. He got into the bike lane and was going like 30 miles an hour on the bike line and there was no, at the speed he was going, there was no way for me to stop or for him to stop. So he hit me and he flew across my hood. And so that was just a first hand experience of how this has made it more unsafe for me. That was his fault. Ah, uh, no, none of that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. The only other thing, you know, thing I wanted to point out was that uh, the city has been approving all these condo plex, uh, condo uh, complexes left and right, which is just adding to the population. Exactly. And it's just, as we get more population, ironically, our roads are shrinking, yep. and it's just making it more Time frustrating. Time, you. You, uh, you And then you. Okay. My husband couldn't eat here tonight because he's at the Atwater Chamber of Commerce. Meeting, so he asked me to read something. He had an office across the street for many, many years. Um, the Ro Rowena Road Diet has made an enormous improvement for the safety of pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists in this neighborhood, and particularly our for our children. Over the years, I have witnessed and participated in the demographic shift to a more family -centered, <coughs> centered and pedestrian oriented community. Concerns for environmental sustainability and community among families have emerged as shared values, and the road diet has greatly supported these values and enhanced our quality of life here. Prior to the impl implementation of the road diet over two years ago, I walked to and from my office several times a day. Crossing Rowena as a pedestrian was a harrowing experience, especially for the elderly, the physically disabled, or able-bodied people with children in tow. The high speed of traffic allowed by the roadway configuration forced even able-bodied pedestrians like myself myself to Time. run across Time. the street Thank you. to avoid yeah. on from your door. about safety. The accident that sort of is the basis of one of the arguments here happened at night with jaywalking. And we should have gotten um, lighting in the in the uh, road that you can press a button and cross the street. That would help with people crossing the street at night to all those re restaurants. Now they did it in Glendale. I mean, you can hardly move down Glendale without hitting a crosswalk or one of those things. You go to Griffith Park past the golf course, if somebody wants to uh, get into their golf cart and cross the street, they can press a button and it turns yellow and everybody stops. So why the heck can't we do this on Rowena? I really do not think Robert. Oh, uh, imagine a Rowena Avenue turned into a street, streetscape that is a fine place to spend our leisure. Imagine a Rowena Avenue with bustling restaurants, cafes, with a vibrant business community offering unique services, 
services to Silver Lake community. A pleasant shaded street where the four-wheeled and the two-wheeled and the four-footed and the two-footed can, can coexist. Imagine a Rowena Avenue as a gateway for Silver Lake to the Los, Los Angeles Riverfront with safe interconnected sidewalks and bike lanes to its parks and paths. Imagine a Rowena Avenue as a thriving, bustling main street for the North Silver Lake neighborhoods with commuter traffic cutting, th cut, cutting through its surrounding residential streets mit mitigated as it has been done on Ro Duane Street. We can plan to transform Rowena into a fine place to spend our leisure time or go back to a highway gash with commuters convenience for a half mile as they speed through our neighborhood to points west and then back to their bedroom communities Time. east. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I live on Rowena. I don't know how, how many of you actually do live on Rowena. I can tell you from personal experience that this is the changing traffic patterns have made me leaving my house a living nightmare. Gentlemen, the green shirt. Uh, Bob Inman, I uh, was going to the school when Eisenhower was president. I happened to have been uh, on the receiving end of a vehicle pedestrian crash when I was eight, year old, eight years old at Rowena in Glendale. And um, uh, it was an elderly woman, and I, if the way, I'm glad people then, or she drove slower, unlike the way people like to drive now, but people drive faster like they do now, I probably wouldn't be here. And uh, you don't want to make this street, I live in Eagle Rock, maybe I go to Kaiser Sunset, you don't want to invite people like me to drive down your neighborhood to go to Kaiser Sunset. These, these Reconfigurations like done it here, like on York, like on Colorado, they make complete safe streets that really are in scale with the neighborhood and really make for vital businesses and make it better for everyone. I do not drive a bike, not ride a bike, but I walk. Thank you. I live on Angus right behind on the flat of Angus. And what we see every day is at Lakewood and Angus, at West Silver Lake and Angus, are people literally ignoring the stop signs. I'd say it's probably 80% people will maybe slow down, 20% never slow down at all. And as a resident of a through street who sometimes has to wait quite some time to get to my house, what I find is that I wouldn't be so annoyed if people actually followed the traffic laws while they were on the bypass street. We've had cars hit on our street several times. It's actually a pretty frequent occurrence now because they were never meant to be two-way. But if people went the 25 miles an hour, maybe it wouldn't be quite, quite so bad. Woman in the jean jacket. Hi. I just want to apologize. I, I live on Rowena, and I would be terrified if it was four lanes of traffic that I had to cross to walk around and walk outside of my door, and there's cars shooting by at every speed. And I'm really sorry that other people's streets have been made unsafe because mine, because I now feel safer on my street, but I would just hope we could start implementing things that would make Angus and Waverly safer, like I now feel my street is safer. Thank you. Okay. I live right on Rowena as well, and I don't feel like this has been made anything any safer for pedestrians or motorists. I have come home in that middle lane and almost been hit head on. As a pedestrian crossing in that middle lane, I've almost been hit several times. We were there when the lady got hit that night, and I don't feel like any of this has addressed that problem with people coming from the Edendale. Maybe some of them have been drinking, and they're not looking, and at night people are speeding. And this hasn't changed any of that. This is still going on. Another thing that DOT, uh, there were no flyering before this. We, the residents of Rowena, we had no say in anything. I hear all this stuff about, oh, we met with the uh, residents on such and such street or such and such. We were never asked. We put up with the, all these condos in a short a matter of time being built and the pollution from the idling cars and also the DWP traffic uh, when they were doing the, you know, water replacement. And it's just, it's gotten worse and worse and worse since the lane diet. And I think it's just basic math when you add houses to take away traffic lanes. It's insane. Yes. Um, I, I live on Angus and it's great that there are bike lanes and slow traffic on Marina. But what has happened, how many people here take Angus now and don't even take Rowena? I'd say the majority of this room. 
what you've gained in safety, we've lost. We have no sidewalk. So when there are 100 cars an hour on Angus, we have nowhere to go. Our street has become so much less safe. We've asked over and over about speed bumps. We've told that the program has been phased out for years. It's not coming back. People blow through our stop signs. We're getting no help. We're all for the bicyclists to have safety. We want that. We applaud it. But it's come at our cost. And we can't walk out our street. I can't walk my dog at the dinner hour because I have nowhere to go. I had to rescue my neighbor from the side, the tiny berm of cement because she was trapped, an elderly lady trapped with cars we can't get through. We've lost out. Ma'am. I just want to mention that when Angus Street was built in 1923, there were 55,000 cars registered in Los Angeles. In 2008, there were 5.8 million cars. That doesn't even count trucks, motorcycles, bicycles, whatever. And to try to make decisions based on streets that were built for tiny little cars with 55,000 drivers, and to push all those millions of drivers onto our little streets, it just doesn't make any sense. I watch my neighbor too many times have to go out and direct traffic, yeah. and I have been yelled at, I haven't been spit at, I've been yelled at, I've been cursed at, I've been threatened with physical harm just because mm -hmm. I want to get back out of my driveway. Sir. Um, I actually crossed the street from Jerome to Bottom of Waverly, and I say Bottom because it's essentially become a thoroughfare for people to just go through. And in the last, I've lived here for five years now, so I've seen both before and after. My girlfriend's nearly been hit by a car three times just crossing the street, and she has to cross, she has to park in the street. And it just becomes such a dangerous situation. And I support the bike lanes, I support people having the ability to, I want to echo some of those sentiments. My, my issue is not, we should get rid of the road dad, we should get rid of the bike lanes. But the cut through traffic, as you've heard, has become really unbearable for some people. I'm glad to hear that that is being thought about and addressed now. I wish maybe it had been thought about a little bit before, but as someone who lives at the bottom of the hill and sees people constantly speeding through there, and I yell at people to slow down. I haven't been yelled at or spit at yet, that's a problem coming. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's just frustrating, and I don't want to take away from other people's happiness and their, what they've gained from this. It's, it's a tough time. Thank you. Before we continue, board members, I'm not entertaining any comments from board members until all our residents have had a say. Uh, <laughs> sir. Hi. Uh, a few quick points. First, uh, as Jeff alluded to earlier, the LACBC's most recent bicycle count showed that the higher quality the infrastructure, the lower the gender disparity in terms of users. I think it would be absolutely abhorrent to entertain any policy that would have a disproportionate impact on people on the basis of their gender. Secondly, I'm very sympathetic to the people in here who've been impacted by cut through traffic, and I'd love to see LADOT adopt even more aggressive measures for traffic calming, such as concrete diverters, concrete islands in the middle of the street that might really slow people down. It would be a big inconvenience for cut through traffic, and that, frankly, would be a great thing. Thank you all for your time. Hi. Sorry, I've got a prop. Uh, this is my son Emery, and we've been using the road diet to commute to our daycare five days a week um, for the last year, and we just graduated from there, and so now we're staying on the south side of Silver Lake. But I just would like to say that Silver Lake is not tremendously walkable like downtown Pasadena, but it's absolutely fantastic on the bike, and the road diet has been magically great for us. And Trader Joe's is 300% better when you're on a bike. <laughs> I'm a resident of South Condell for the last 23 years, but I have always frequented Silver Lake and my place in that water. Um, I, I'm a supporter of the road diet. I mean, I've been driving around this area for a long time. I don't see a big change in the traffic pattern, uh, but it definitely feels a lot more safe, and I think the, the numbers show that it's a lot safer. Uh, can I ask a question of DOT? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I am totally sympathetic to the cut through problem. I think it's a huge problem. Uh, but I don't think that it should be addressed by undoing the road diet. I think it should be addressed by mitigating factors like curb bump outs, 
uh, of big speed homes that are enforcement of traffic signals. Um, and uh, maybe uh, what we need to do is start talking to Waze and Google Maps and see if we can yeah, get them to reprioritize nice. where they send people. Because I think a lot of people follow Waze, mm -hmm. they see traffic in Rowena, Waze sends them out to the side streets. So we yeah. need to get them to not do that. We need to inform them well, that they're creating a big safety issue. Thank you. Sir, on the wall. No, in front. Glasses. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're both glasses. <laughs> 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 So I live on the, on Glendale Boulevard. Uh, so I have her very interesting. So my grandmother, she's in a wheelchair all her life. Since the world die has been around and on the curve, uh, has curved to the right of Glendale a few times when I'm crossing with her, cars don't stop. Even there's a light saying no, you have the right to cross. A few times she will, you know, car will pass by. And me, I have to pull her back. And she, no, she is a diamond to me. If anything happens to her, you know, I'm willing to go crazy. Because if like, it's to respect each person, like they said earlier, we don't want anybody to lose that person. She is my diamond, my rock. And especially in the wheelchair, it's harder. I'm not sure if anybody been around with somebody uh, around 24 hours with a wheelchair, then you understand more because you know it's more respect than anything else. Since the road died, it's it's became more dangerous, especially with someone with disabilities. Time. Thank you, lady in the yellow. Yeah, um, I'm also an Angus resident, and I've also had like multiple issues. Many cats dying um, from people hitting them because of the cut through traffic. However, I'm also my husband and I are also both avid cyclists. I ride to and from the store several times a week, and I ride to the bank and do errands on my bike. So the road diet is absolutely essential, and I'm very happy that it exists. I do think there needs to be more enforcement of the stop signs, and there needs to be some one-way streets and some other creative solutions so that the side streets can become safer. And the other problem that I think the city council member needs to know about is the are the are the huge natural speed bumps that are now getting yeah. so bad that there are some slides <laughs> on the bottom. Yeah. Thank you, Jane, then gentleman with the a woman in the black shirt, and then gentleman with the tattoo arms. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I think we all need to have some more common courtesy, and that maybe there can be some kind of compromise because I've lived here 19 years, and only recently has the traffic become so bad. And uh, it's bumper to bumper, it's gridlock at each of the major intersections. And like they mentioned earlier, there's these developments that are being built right now. The LCL 70, uh, 2029, the, the latitudes, when those are in full capacity, it's going to be even worse gridlock. So I don't think this is a bad idea. I mean, maybe we can come up with a compromise or something a little bit different or more creative so that it won't be so bad because there's going to be a ton more residents soon. Woman in the black shirt. Yeah, I just don't understand why DOT did not use the Larchmont model. The Larchmont model took a slanted parking, so they got more parking in. It's also, they have so many crosswalks there and mm -hmm. the, I don't know what you call them, the strip lights. But it's so pedestrian friendly and it's beautification. I mean, we don't have that in Silver Lake. <coughs> and I'm really disappointed. Uh, gentleman tattoo, woman in the purple, and young man in the back in the blue shirt. Uh, yeah, I've uh, lived here since uh, 2003, and I've had, uh, I live on uh, Glendale Boulevard, just east of the Rowena Diet, and there's been about a half dozen accidents that I've seen on our street, and since this diet's happened, a side byproduct is our, my street seems safer. I haven't seen any accidents since this has happened. It seems that people tend to stay to the left, and they don't drag race to Fletcher. Um, we are a choke point from the freeway to the city and vice versa, and we just get a lot of traffic. Fletcher to the freeway is good locked every night, and that's got nothing to do with the road diet. And, you know, I'm happy with the road diet. I think that the statistics show that it's working, but the problem is is that it's now bleeding into the other streets, and I'm really not satisfied with what you're saying you're going to do about solving that. Woman in the purple. Hi, I just wanted to say, notice what we're all complaining about. People driving cars unsafely. 
Why are they driving unsafely? Because the city has made it almost impossible to choose other options. That's what we need, other options, so that we can choose for all of us what's best to get around the city safely. Hey, I'm 11 years old and I've been writing to my school since I was seven. I do everything motorists say they want to see in the cycles. No problem, right? Nope. I've lost track of the number of cars who have purposely violated my legal right of drinking with safety or shouting obscenities at me. Can you imagine the kind of monster that yells F you to a child? <laughs> <laughs> motorists out there who are not mature enough to share the road without having the rules painted on the road to show who goes where. The road diet by design is meant to slow cars down because motorists are the problem. Please stop bullying and victim blaming the pedestrians and bicyclists as being the problem. I don't understand why driving a car makes you think you're more important than something else. It's whiny, entitled behavior you wouldn't tolerate it from the kid, so why should I tolerate it? Great comment. Uh, something that probably all know as residents of the neighborhood, but we've received so many positive comments from people about the place that we live because it is pedestrian friendly. And the, road, and the road die is what makes it nice in our eyes and also in the eyes of outsiders that come visit us. So I just want to say that. <coughs> and secondly, um, it actually appears to me that the 35 mile an hour speed limit is too high still. Yeah. 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 I live in the area, and I gotta say, I only use really Rowena. You hear me? Yeah. I only use Rowena to get to Glendale Boulevard, and I use Glendale Boulevard to either go on to the I five to get to the, the I five, or to get to downtown LA. I mean, I don't know what I would do or how, what anyone would do to get anybody who needed to go to either of those places, because most of the time people would do that in the morning to get to work. And even if you add, added a lot of stop signs, all that's gonna do is slow people down. It's not really going to get people to change to bikes because I couldn't take a bike to downtown LA. When I hit the red line, I think that hill would kill me. And <laughs> if I was taking the I-5 to like Anaheim, I'm not gonna do that on a bicycle either. So I think really all it's gonna do is more people are gonna be stuck in Less lanes, and less lanes can carry less traffic, and I don't think they'll be able to get to where they're going. Gentlemen in the black shirt. It seems to me that the whole reason the road died came uh, into place in the first place is someone died crossing the walk at night. I haven't seen anything done to fix that. There's no more lights, there's no more crosswalks, there's, there's nothing done for that, and, and that's what we need to do. You're talking about safety on Rowena. Well, what about the safety on all the side streets? You pushed it from one street where we can put some controls in to all the side streets that you want to spend all this money fixing all the side streets. Let's fix one street, get it done. I can't believe the engineers that put two lanes going both ways long ago didn't put more thought and inter inter engineering into it than the people who took the lanes out. Uh, we need to put some thought in it. We need to fix the street that was the problem to begin with and get all of our side streets. I live on Waverly. I know your streets are bad. Let's fix the one street that caused it and not push everything all over and spend all this money controlling and ticketing and. I, I, I know I get road rage and I know the reason I go around is because I don't like the traffic and that's the people that are coming to my neighborhood now where we don't have sidewalks like someone mentioned over here. My dogs are going to get killed and I'm going to get mad. Tom, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I've been in this neighborhood for almost 15 years. I've had a child in one of the schools nearby. I, I am a business owner with employees and was across the street in the Roger building for a year and a half before and during the road diet was here when the accident happened, as many people have referred to. And I, I like many of the people here, have to balance these trade-offs every day. Rowena I mean, is a key kind of potential <coughs> corridor for me. Usually I go around Riverside now because of the road diet and the traffic, um, but I don't have to cut through somebody's, somebody's yard. But I, and I think the comment I wanted to make today is really about community. We, um, 
uh, it was hard enough sending the memo when the young woman was dropped across the street, <coughs> the street to my employees. Um, it was a lot harder when one of my employees was struck in the crosswalk, in the signal crosswalk at West Overlake. Um, there's no question in my mind she wouldn't be with us if uh, someone had been traveling at speed, and there's no question in my mind that the road dive has, has reduced speed, mitigated speed generally. I think statistically as well as anecdotally that correlates with fewer deaths. And I just like to say that there's one thing we should all be trying to solve for as a community. I think Time. humans versus death. Time, Craig. <laughs> I want to express an empathy for those who are frustrated by the consequences that we've seen from the road dive, because there's no question there have been consequences. And I think that by the same token, many of us would really like to go back to a somewhat more nostalgic time of driving around with a convertible looking at the palm trees <laughs> went up. But let's face it, we're really stuck with the fact that Silver Lake is forced to endure huge amounts of traffic that are trying to connect uncompleted and will never be completed chunks of freeway. That said, we have to recognize that once upon a time, DOT, and this was in a quote from their director in the Los Angeles Times, said, our job is to move cars, not people. And with that in mind, we have to look at where we are at now with the road diet. There, perhaps we forgot that what it was like before the road diet, where you were playing lane roulette, somebody's making a left turn, here's somebody parking, here's a pedestrian, and you're constantly doing this lane shift. What this means, and this is perhaps at the risk of being an oxymoron, we need some some truly creative traffic engineering, like traffic signal timing to address the consequences of rush hour road diet. Time. Thank you. <coughs> Gentlemen, the black glasses. Um, uh, two things. One, the striping at the stop signs on Angus, because I go over Angus every single day, is faded. And it's very easy for people who don't know that neighborhood to keep speeding right through them, because the stop signs are kind of a, on odd little spots. So I would ask at the very least that that looks to be addressed. Uh, the other thing is I want to echo the first comment about the left turn lane, except in the other direction, turning on to Lakewood. I don't know why that arrow is there, particularly on a day, on like a Saturday afternoon when there's no traffic relatively, and I'm waiting for two minutes for a light to turn. If that could be adjusted even to work only during peak hours, and then just be a regular yield on green, that would make a huge difference to my experience on Rowena. Gentlemen in the back, on the way back. No, gentlemen here in the white shirt. Uh, this part of uh, Silver Lake is like a, it's not uh, easy to commute. I suggest a dash system, so that will be, yeah, give an incentive for people to commute more because it takes miles and miles to walk to uh, to Sunset. The temperature, uh, public temperature is great there, and also that intersection there, uh, the Rowena Hyperion is very dangerous. I suggest like uh, uh, the green light uh, turn system. For, for people uh, to, for, for cars to, to drive on uh, to uh, Hyperion from Rowena. Yeah, because I live at that intersection, close to that intersection, and I hear car accidents all the time, and it's from that because people don't know how to turn left. So that would alleviate that problem. A woman in the gray jacket. Hi, um, I just wanted to thank the city for making Rowena a lot safer. I chair Ivanhoe's Walk to School initiatives. I'm happy to report that since the diet went in, we've had a measurable increase in active transportation to school. Um, we're working to increase these numbers, which will hopefully also further decrease traffic on Waverly, which I'm sure is a lot from our drop-off line. We're starting a walking bus program. Um, we already have parents signed up to volunteer to lead this starting in, August, in October. Could you speak up? Um, oh, yeah, we're starting a walking bus program to help further make it easier for parents to let their kids walk to school. And the one thing stopping um, further increased participation is the street safety. That's always the number one concern of parents. Um, from speed to stopping at stop signs. So to the extent we can help quell that, we could reduce traffic even further. Um, and then finally, I just wanna say my children don't drive and I hope that they can have a neighborhood um, that extends way beyond their street where they have the freedom and safety to move around. Thank you, gentlemen, the black people. In terms of the other neighborhoods that are impacted by the uh, all the traffic, is what we've seen, um, we live behind the Rowena Reservoir. Uh, the daily gridlock that we have at Rowena and St. George is, uh, you know, ev everyone in the neighborhood goes around it. The backup on Griffith Park almost always, you know, it goes back to the high school. And then Hyperion is also backed up all, there's some days it's all the way past Lyric. Uh, and then God forbid there's a Dodgers game. <laughs> and uh, that's, you know, for particularly for the people up front that don't live here every day, 
you know, you know, we have our regular, this today, I don't know why, traffic is really good. It's not like this every day, trust me. But, you know, we have our regular days, and then we have Dodger Gate. And then, you know, so you need to take that type, when you do your planning, please take that into consideration. Gentlemen, the pleasure. I uh, live in Eagle Rock and I work in Koreatown and I have to drive through Silver Lake, guys. I don't want to drive through your neighborhood, but it's it's how I get to work. And I really uh, got to say that in Eagle Rock, we've had several road diets. One I would say is successful, and that's the one on York. And one I would say is awful, and that's the one on Colorado. <laughs> now we've got this one on Rowena, which is definitely not good. And I would like to see something done that can alleviate uh, pedestrian accidents without forcing drivers to be stuck in constant gridlock. I don't want to drive through here every day. I would love to be able to just have a limo take me to work, but that's not how it works. <laughs> so what I really would like to see is, like, perhaps there's something that could be done with bridges. You know, be, perhaps light, light duty pedestrian bridges, cheaply made, could go over four <laughs> lanes of traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coming up with ideas. <laughs> so, I don't want to have to be stuck in traffic. This Rowena Road diet has been terrible. And that's basically what I have to say about it. Thank you. In the back. And you're the woman with the hand up. Yes. Um, I've lived on Angus Street for 22 years. And i got to tell you, it's never been good to, to on that street in traffic. I kind of led a way. I wanted a speed bus there. And we got as a consolation from Tom LeVon after a lot of effort stop signs that you see now that were there before. They, however, are not used by anyone. People speed right by like it's a foreign language and they're not looking. And so we've always needed speed bumps on Angus. And in my opinion, we've always needed those red crosswalks on Rowena. Always, always. You're not going to get around this kind of stuff eventually or more people are going to get hit. The speed bumps forcibly slow people down. Stop signs don't. 10 mile an hour signs don't. I've watched it all of it. It's been a window to my world all this time. I'm telling you, this is the truth. We have to enforce this stuff. With, with, you know, hardware. Gentlemen with the cap, the blue shirt, you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Hi there. <laughs> uh, again, yeah, speaking for a lot of residents here that are drivers, I live on Hyperion. I've been there for 15 years, and sadly, I work in Santa Monica, so oh. a long commute. <laughs> a long commute is part of my day, but, uh, you know, I've heard a couple of other folks say the, uh, one important thing, which is when this city has a functioning mass transit system, we're not going to use it before it's built, we're going to use it when it's built. Right. And, uh, you know, the Rowena diet, it's very sad, it's created a lot of frustration congestion, where you've got people ignoring stop signs and cutting through the side streets. I was driving on Rowena towards Iperion and a very nice 30-something lady was driving in the bike lane. Driving in her car in the bike lane. So, seriously folks, uh, when that Whole Foods goes in down the street there, it's all going to be back again. Because right now the Ralph is closed and the traffic is slow. When that Whole Foods comes back up again, you're really going to need to have a good plan. Thank you. You know, I'd like to have the LAUSD perhaps be brought into this the next time we have one of these meetings. On days when there's no school and in the summer, on Waverly Drive, the traffic goes down about 90%. I also know that a lot of the backup that the other gentleman talked about, going back to Lyric on St. George, happens during the school year. Every day, there are four commuter trips for every kid going to each school. I'd like to know, I've asked a couple of parents, why don't the kids bike to, to, uh, to a Marshall High School? No bike racks, no bike blocks, and the streets are unsafe to bike. Well, I'd be willing to give up the bike lanes and give a lot of credence to a lot of people using the bike lanes in the street if the parents would let the kids take bikes to school, reducing about a thousand bike trips a day, and also get a little bit of weight off the kids. <laughs> Uh, just a, and I'm going to be taking two more comments, then we have to go to the floor, and then we'll go to our panel. I guess who's left who brought up Dash. I just wanted to say I saw on the website recently for the Los Feliz Neighborhood Council that one of their council members is working on a Dash bus idea from <clears throat> Hillhurst. It'll go over to like Marshall High School and then down near the metro station. And I know I would take that every day and get on that metro if I could get down there. <laughs> 
neighborhood. I have two kids here at Ivan Ho and another in a local preschool. And I agree with what he said. We walk to school. Rowena is safer for kids walking to Ivanhoe and it encourages us to walk to Ivanhoe because there's a road diet. It also inspired me to try to ride my bike with my son to school, which we do every now and then. I wouldn't have done that without the bike lane and without Rowena being a safer street to ride on. And as my kids get older, I hope that they go to Thomas Star King and Marshall High School and I hope that the streets will be safe enough for them to walk or ride their bikes to school without me having to fear for their lives. Establishment salon right across the street here, and uh, I just want to say that we support the road diet. It's been safer for um, our clients, for our staff who are mainly local that walk and ride their bike a lot, um, and then also for the side streets and the, the neighbors. Um, it is bad, you know, that the traffic is going out into your um, streets and causing more traffic there. But as a business owner, we'd be supportive of um, sponsoring. Crosswalks, sponsoring, uh, cameras put in, because if there's no accountability, no one can slow down, so I just want to offer that. Yeah, I live um, on the other side of Rowena, and I have a kid in first grade in Ivanhoe, and a four-year-old, and uh, we uh, walk or bike to work several, uh, to school several days a week, and I feel a lot safer uh, now that the Rowena road diet is in place. Um, I also, a couple days a week, I, I also from Ivanhoe then bike to USC Medical School where I work. And the worst part of my commute is when the bike lane ends and you go on to um, Glendale and have to take the left down Fletcher to the bike path. Once you get on the bike path, it's beautiful. That's a wonderful part of the city that's being developed. I think if we have connectivity between the great things happening mm -hmm. here and what's happening at the bike path, that would be a benefit for all of us. Oh, here we go. I notice is that there is sometimes traffic during rush hour in Rowena, but it's not that bad. And outside of rush hour, the traffic is really not bad at all. And there's still tons of cars going through Angus to Trader Joe's and the other side. And I really feel bad for the people on Angus. It's horrible traffic. People are really interested in it. We need better ways of addressing that, such as one-way streets or something else. All right, now. One more on this side, two more on this side. I've been counting. Uh, so we're going to do one more on this side. Anyone in the back? Got it. Let's go. I'm uh, I also live north of Hyperion, uh, off of where you're living. There's a couple of neighbors who addressed some things. I didn't hear some of the original comments, but uh, it seems to be focused more on south of Hyperion. But I know people uh, cut through from Waverly all the way over on Griffith Park and they go all the way around to get over on the other side to get out on uh, Glendale. Uh, there's no sidewalks, there's narrow streets, blind corners, blind hills, no street lights. Uh, and also they cut over Ettrick, over the uh, reservoir, to make a left turn onto Hyperion, which is a very dangerous left turn, because you have a blind <coughs> traffic coming up uh, westbound on Hyperion. And I didn't know if any ever considered up there, and I know some of my neighbors have been involved in this much longer than I have, about making some of those streets one way um, to make it a little bit more controllable for the residents so there's not as much cut through traffic on Waverly Drive from one end to the next and on Hedrick. Gentleman in the back and then the woman in the front will be the last me. Uh, I used to live on Lakewood. I still live off in the hills in Silver Lake. We, it was one of the impetuses to move. We could not back out of our driveway and this goes back to before the dive when the construction for the water first began. I think that we need to look really deep into the future. We have to have mass transit. We have to have bike lanes. We cannot say these things have to move forward. We have to look towards what's happening in the reservoir. Additional traffic is going to be brought in depending on what plan is finally put in there. This has to be a long range plan. It has to be a sophisticated plan. We can do it. We can have probably one of the most brilliant parts of this city with the lake and everything that's going on with it, but we have to accommodate what is going to come with that and what exists today. And so that goes to the Department of Transport, goes to the community, we have to do this again. This is not the only time we can do this. And uh, we have to be creative, and this is a creative community. We can do this, but we have to do it together. I mean, with the city and everything. That's Woman in the house. Hi, I live on the hill up behind the CVS, and I drive and bike and walk to school. I find it much safer today. I want to know that I have choice and choices that are safe for all of us to get around. I want to make sure that we do neighborhood traffic calming on adjacent streets so that we make sure that people 
stay on the major boulevards if they're going to destinations on those on those streets. I think oh, I want to see an even better Rowena where we have great crosswalks where people can go from business to business across the street and that residents and kids can safely move about their community. This is all about safety. I serve as the chair of the city's pedestrian advisory committee and I'm the executive director of Los Angeles Walks. I've been dedicating the last 20 years of my life to pedestrian safety and this is my community and I want it to be safe for everyone. All right. Speakers, and then we're calling it a day. We'll go to our panel. Yes. Hi, I live on Lower Angus, and I have a problem on my street where it appears during peak hours that commuters are cutting through. It does not appear to be residents. They do not appear to know that we do not have room for two-way traffic, and they constantly butt up against each other going two different directions, and I have to go out in the morning in my pajamas and arbitrate these disputes. <laughs> I would prefer not to have to do that. Okay, um, Matt and then Joe, and try to make it less than a minute. I really don't like uh, the Rowena Road diet. I, uh, I hate being in my car. I hate not moving. Um, I hate, uh, I'll, I'll drive 10 times as long as, as long as I can keep moving at 15 miles an hour. And, uh, and so now it takes so long to get to my daughter's uh, soccer game at, uh, at, uh, at King that we actually don't even drive, we just walk down there. And it takes so long for me to... It takes me, it takes me so long to commute uh, to get up to where I live by Angus and Mitchell Terrena that, you know, I did the Waze thing. I don't, my nephew works for Waze. They're never gonna block off traffic. That's their business. Um, you have to make it the slower way to go, which I think we should do on the side streets. But I don't use, I don't use those side streets anymore because I, I just work till seven o'clock until, until rush hour is over. And so it's really changed my behavior, which I hate, but I think that's the point. <laughs> directed at CD4, every day I hear something from residents about Angus. Please do something about <laughs> Angus. And the second comment is, in this area, we have 120 units coming online in the next year. Mm -hmm. Traffic is only gonna get worse. Mm -hmm. And the intersection at Ropeby, Glendale, and Waverly is a disaster. Needs a light. That's, that's Excellent. Sir in the flat. No, no, no. Uh, I'd like to address my comment to the police captain in front of me in the suit. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Uh, the, the Central Division traffic. I'm actually just a detective, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. Make sure the promotion. My, my, uh, <laughs> is that earlier you mentioned you 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 mentioned that you don't believe that traffic deaths are anything that's ever going to stop in Los Angeles, and that's uh, causes me extreme concern. I walk on the streets of Los Angeles, I drive on the streets of Los Angeles, I ride my bicycle on the streets of Los Angeles, and it's extremely worrisome to me that a representative of the Los Angeles Police Department feels that traffic deaths are an inevitability, because they're not. The truth. Traffic deaths have causes, they can be stopped. We need, to, we need to do what it takes to stop traffic deaths in Los Angeles, and the Rowena Road, Road Diet is a great step, it's a small step in that direction. And so I, I'm absolutely sympathetic to the plight of the people that live on the small streets. They need safe streets too. We all need safe streets, so please, okay. let's find a solution. For that. Okay, we're moving back to the women are not as strong on those bikes. You I've been here for over 20 years. I live down by um, Farewell, and I take my son over here to um, uh, Cornerstone, and it's taking us 25 minutes to get over here. And I just feel sorry for everyone, you know, not being able to keep that flow. There's this, a single lane from Fletcher onto Glendale Boulevard and then Hyperion. There's nobody here on Hyperion because everybody's still waiting at the red light right here at the fire station. So at least they can <coughs> try to fix the, um, the controlled intersection light where it would be longer green so there's more cars just flowing just try to keep it flowing try to figure something out repaint it then then the the um the turn lane thin it a little bit put two lanes right there we can all share i don't mind uh, you know i'll go all, i you know i don't mind sharing the road at all i just want to keep going i want to keep moving one of 
to all the way, the people all the way in the back, the FedEx guy, the U UPS guy that's over Hi. there on Fletcher and Glendale, just sitting there waiting, everybody's patiently waiting. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, we're, we are going to have our, uh, our panelists give a minute 30, a minute 30 <laughs> final comment. We're going to start to the left. Um, again, I just say thank you for all your comments and input. Um, you know, from the Bicycle Advisory Committee standpoint, what we really want, as I said at the start, is safer streets for all. That means absolutely doing something about the cut through traffic on the local streets. I mean, some people have made reference to ways. I think it's the cut through traffic that you're experiencing is not completely unique to this place where a road diet has been put in. It's like Waze has created opportunities and ways for people that they never had any idea that those streets ever connected. Um, and so, I mean, from the Bicycle Advisories Committee standpoint, I'd say we are absolutely committed to addressing your issues and um, doing what we can to make your streets as safe as Rowena has become for us. Thank you. Let's not applause in between because it gives us more time to get the hell out of here. <laughs> um, once again, thank you everybody for showing up and, be concern and being concerned about this neighborhood and wanting to see this neighborhood become a better place for people to hang out, go to coffee shops, do yoga, go to the cafes. Uh, I already said that. I grew up on the ultimate cut through street, which was Barham Boulevard. And over the years, the LADOT took out our parking, they put in more lanes. And it never solved the traffic problem. It only increased traffic in front of our house to the point where my mom said, we're out of here. And my dad had to haul all his junk out. And it was a big traumatic experience. But I'll tell you, cut through traffic is what everybody here is complaining about. And Angus, let's fix that. You know, Waverly, fix that. Rowena should not be a cut through option. It should be a it should be Larchmont of Silver Lake. Exactly. And it would be so much better for us. And let's build a connection to the LA River bike path because that would be a beautiful thing, wouldn't it? Joshua. Anyways, that's all I got to say. Joshua. So I have two hats again. Uh, I'm here with the LA Bike Coalition, which uh, totally hears and supports all the complaints about the cut through traffic and I am also a neighbor, and I totally hear and support all those complaints about the cut through traffic, and I'm also a father. And I have a child who may end up going to Ivanhoe or Franklin, and may end up going to King, and may end up going to Marshall. And I have this fantasy in my head that by the time she's old enough to do that, I'm not gonna be stuck in a line of cars waiting for half an hour to pull forward 50 feet to drop her off in front of school because I don't feel like it's safe enough for her to either walk there or, dr or ride her bike there. I want my kid to be able to get to school safely. And we've got schools all over this neighborhood. We've got Dodger Stadium, we've got Griffith Park, we've got destinations all throughout this neighborhood. But guess what? It's a neighborhood. It's where we live. And I like neighborhoods, and I want it to feel like a neighborhood. And to me, the issue is data, that we are looking at a population increase globally. You can't get away from that, that in the next 100 years, we're going to have 10 million people on the planet. And all those bodies have to go somewhere. And I don't see how you can stick them all in cars. It's just, there's nobody's making any more land. So with that, I would ask everybody to keep an open mind to some other option. Time. Thank you, James. Um, yeah, I, I, I was not trying to be cynical, and I, and I wanted to say, Rowena was always in the bike plan. It was, in, it was going to be a future backbone. So this was always going to happen. Um, what I was talking about was not that you shouldn't, you know, that I, I was insisting you had to do an EIR because it's no longer necessary with AB 2245. What I was talking about is process where the city holds hearings, does meetings, does traffic and safety reports. If you look at the reports for Colorado, even though I've heard that it didn't work out too well, there were extremely, there were a lot of reports, there was a lot of stuff done, and the city holds public hearings. Not up to you and a neighborhood council to do that. And notices go out to people, 
maybe it wouldn't have solved all the problems, maybe they would have missed a lot of stuff, but I think if they had done the traffic and study safeties that are required, I believe by law, I'm not sure about the 50 that were excluded, um, you would be here, but maybe the problems would be a whole lot less. Maybe they wouldn't, I don't know. But we are, we're a land of laws and process. And in the city of Los Angeles, sometimes we get away from that. We're all protected by process and by rules. And I think if we follow them, whether people like it or not, maybe we can shortcut some of these problems and we can all get together, you know, and try to get along. I don't know. <laughs> First, I want to say uh, thanks for having your local fire department come out. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, two things. Fire department don't ask for much. <laughs> but two things we would like is, one, in front of our fire station, we would like it to say, keep clear, so when we come out, we're able to get out. Yeah. And please, when we're coming down the street, if you would pull to the right. Oh, okay. <laughs> So thank you all for your time. I know that it's precious, um, and on behalf of the council member, I really appreciate all of your input. Uh, I do want to say he's looking at this as a you know a problem that needs to be solved, and that we're looking at all of the data, whether it's the data on Rowena, or the data on Angus, or the data on Waverly. We want to see the entire picture and get all of the neighborhood input. He, the great thing about being new is he still is full of energy and optimism. <laughs> he thinks, you know, we can find consensus on some really smart solutions. So that's our job and it's why we came out in, in large numbers tonight. But um, I just also wanna say how important it is that this part where the data set's too small or this part where something sort of surprises you and nobody knew about it, that is something we are absolutely not going to do. So you're not going to see us tonight and then never hear from us again. You're not going to say this was my comment and you know I never found out about it. I think all of your ideas have merit. I mean, even if it's a bridge, you know, there's something to a lot of these ideas, and we really should think it through. But when this comes to you know solutions. We'll be coming back to you and saying, look, well, this didn't work out because there's a law against that, or this didn't work out because the funding wasn't there. But we're gonna come up with those solutions and bring them back to you and and you know try and resolve them. So thank you for having us. Um, I'll just say that I share, I and my department share the optimism of the council office, and I think um, you know, that's what drives us now, and there, are, there were prior administrations and generations that did things differently, but we are where we are now. We have by no means done this flawlessly. There were errors along the way. Outreach was a bumpy ride, as it usually is. We have lack of resources that we're slowly coming back with, uh, you know, getting back to where we should be. Um, but we're committed to working with the community. We're not a developer that's going to build a building and leave. We're the city. We're here permanently. And we're not going to rest until we solve these issues. And I hope that's not without by trading one thing for another. I hope everything can coexist and we can solve the neighborhood issues mm -hmm. on the side streets. Uh, thank you all for being here and giving us your feedback. Um, you know, a, a, I think it speaks wonders how organized uh, you folks are and, and how uh, passionate everyone is. Um, I, I did hear a lot of feedback about Angus. Um, you might be surprised to know that turning streets into a one-way street is actually something the neighborhood controls. Uh, it's done through a petition process. Uh, I will be following up with your neighborhood council representatives and uh, I'll be you know, available to work with them and give them all the necessary paperwork, but we can come up with some sort of master plan to create some one-way streets and we want to do whatever we can to help you as well curb some of this cut through traffic. I know it's a headache for everybody, but uh, as uh, Tim said, you know, we're also here to help as best we can. Good evening, everybody, and thank you all for, for being here. This is uh, truly, truly amazing to see a group of folks from both sides of the fence uh, being able to, to argue and get their point across. And Mary, Marianne, thank you for... It's Anne Marie. I'll take any compliment. It's okay. I'm sorry, my bad. It's okay. And to, to the young man, the 11-year-old, I mean, that's, that's a future councilman. Yeah. <laughs> Four times. 
Yes. <laughs> the, the bottom line, uh, traffic safety is part of uh, public safety. And our job as Los Angeles police officers is to enhance public safety and to improve quality of life. Those are the two things that the Chief Charlie Beck wants. Enhance public safety and uh, reduce crime. Uh, we're committed to that. We are totally committed to that. What my detective, what Detective Mike Hayden here said, I don't think he was minimizing the, the, the effect, effort of the department or trying to say, hey, accidents are going to happen. But vehicle engineering is a lot better. Roadways are much better. We're always doing things to improve traffic safety. And, and not one injury or one death is acceptable. Okay? But unfortunately, we're realist also. And we know stuff is going to happen. It doesn't minimize it or take it away. Or we're just going to say, there's nothing we can do about that. But we are going to do everything we can hear your concerns to reduce traffic safety or to improve traffic safety and uh, reduce crime and quality of life issues here in the, in the area. Captain Young. Good evening. You didn't hear much from me tonight. I was taking a lot of notes and listening to the panelists and listening to all of you. And we as a police department, we have a lot of work to do. We're not taking sides, but we're actually going to try and work a little better with DOT to see if there's some enforcement actions we can do. I live in the city of Los Angeles. I kind of have the same similar problems that you're talking about as far as people cutting in and out of the streets. It drives me crazy too. So I actually feel your pain and I want to do something about it. My officers want to do something about it. You'll see more of Officer Boca out and about. He's like, yeah, sure, Captain. <laughs> He's going to be out there along with other officers. So if you see him and you see other folks out there wearing boots, they work for me. If you have any questions, any concerns, please give us a call. We have cards. We want to really address your problems and your concerns because there are problems and our concerns as well. So thanks for having us tonight. She won't mention this, but the captain rolled on the scene where the young woman was killed at Edendale. So she was there to, um, she was there. I, there's not much you can say about that scene. It's um, very tragic uh, for, for everyone that was there. The family, the young woman that lost her life, 24 years old. Just starting her life, trying to be somebody in this world, and uh, lost her life. Um, the person that hit her, very tragic for him as well. So no one won that night at all. It was just a tragic, tragic accident. So um, we're trying to prevent those accidents, honestly. So let's see what we can do. Work together with the DOT, work with the um, Northeast area, work with all of you. Give us more work to do. <laughs> Call me. Call me. Thank, Thank you so much. Yes, it was very tragic. And I live a block from where she was killed. And one thing I think that I think we can all agree on tonight is that we get better lighting on some of these dark spots on Rowena. And I'm sure that's that David's office will help make that happen because it's still dark there. We have the old light posts, as you know, and some of them don't give off a lot of light, and that's, that's where it goes. So the one there doesn't. Um, what I want to say is this, um, and I'm sorry that I felt, you guys felt I was being up on DOT tonight. Um, the speed, the, the analysis that was done really only reduced the steep speed by three miles per hour. So I understand it might feel safer to many of you. It doesn't feel safer to me. I can't cross. I don't even try crossing at Rockaby and Rowena anymore, almost at any time of day. Um, this is a major, Rowena is a major artery. We only have five major arteries in Silver Lake, in and around Silver Lake. This is one of them. The gentleman back here eloquently said, why are we dealing, why are we trying to fix the problems this problem created? I think we need to address this problem and solve this problem rather than running around like, chickens with their head cut off addressing all the other problems. That said, personally, I'm open. If there's a compromise we can make, great. I mean, if we lose a lane of parking on Rowena somehow or whatever, I, I'm, I'm all ears. But we need to figure it out. Um, we have a new council member who I know will help us do that. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all. I want to thank the panel. I want to thank